Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Hello, and thank you for being a listener. Before we get into the episode, I wanted to let you know about a special offer being given to the new warehouse listener. That's you. Mobile Robot Guide is offering 10% off just for you when you purchase the Warehouse Solutions Buyer's Guide. Just use promo code WarehousePod10 at MobileRobotGuide.com. That's WarehousePod10. This is your comprehensive guide for all things autonomous mobile robots. That's Warehouse Pod 10. And for more info, go to thenewwarehouse.com. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. On today's episode, we're going to check back in with IBM. Uh, we're going to talk to Jonathan Wright. He is the global head of cognitive process re-engineering for IBM's global business services. He's going to talk to us a little bit about things that have been going on with COVID. You guys may remember we had uh, Jeanette Barlow on from IBM as well during episode 72. Um, she talked to us a little bit about opportunities coming out of covid um, but Jonathan's going to talk to us a little bit more about something called continuous intelligent planning and also a little bit about how people are using AI and plan to use AI um, to help support them coming out of the pandemic and also to help them in the future um, to be more resilient during something like this. Uh, so, Jonathan, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, I'm great and great. So thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I hear so much uh, positive stuff about your about your podcast. So. Uh Really good to be here. Oh, yeah. That's that's good to hear. I like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell us, I guess, tell us a little bit about, so cognitive process re-engineering. I mean, that's that's a pretty, yeah. pretty nice title it's there. So, yeah. So tell, <laughs> tell us, uh, yeah, tell, tell us about that. What, what is that exactly? And what, what kind of services does that arm of IBM offer to uh, their customers? Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's, um, it's a bit of a mouthful, cognitive process reengineering. The, the way I look at it, it's, it's kind of like the core consulting arm of, of IBM. Mm. And you know, our, our focus is very much on how we can reimagine the way work gets done across the enterprise, um, at, mainly by adopting next generation technologies, convergent technologies, cognitive technologies. So AI, automation, blockchain um, uh, and um, IOT and the likes. And so we wanted to have the cognitive in there to remind everybody that this is about, you know, bringing intelligence, making processes smart. Um, but the process reengineering, you know, it's what we've been doing for, for many years is trying to continually reimagine the way work gets done. So we focus very much on supply chain end to end. And we'll talk obviously a lot more about that, but also finance, um, HR, um, um, processes, uh, and then into some of the core core processes in banking and finance and telco um, and healthcare. So, you know, thinking about, you know, how do you go and help our clients reimagine the way work gets done? And that has been, uh, that lens has been, you know, uh, really, um, ex- you know, the focus on that has been accelerated with COVID because, mm. you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the lessons learned from COVID, but that's really kind of shone a light on on the cracks in supply chain. Um, and how we've really got to to motor forward. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's kind of uh, so it's a it's a big title, right? But it sounds like it's it's very kind of at the core of what IBM has been doing for all along, right? Yeah. I mean, look, the, one of the reasons I, I joined IBM uh, was because you know, it, it's is fundamentally a technology business, and mm-hmm. the next generation, the next wave of transformation that's happening from 
from planning through to warehouse operations through to you know all of the enterprise functions involves technology and you know the next generation technology and so to support the biggest transformations around the world I, I you know I knew I needed to work for a technology company and um, and it's great having the level of expertise that I have at my fingertips and the levels of assets and tools that I have at my fingertips to, to take to clients. Definitely. All right. So, so I mentioned in the beginning of the show, you know, we previously talked to uh, your colleague, Jeanette Barlow, um, on episode yeah. 72, and that was kind of focused around um, opportunities kind of coming out of COVID, right? So, yeah. but, uh, so IBM recently had this supply chain report that they released, and it was found that 70% of the surveyed supply chain executives for this report said that they plan to use intelligent automation or some type of AI to help them support their demand management and forecasting, I think, over the next three years, it said specifically. So yeah. so what do you think is kind of driving that? Obviously, partly pandemic, but what really is making that shift towards them adopting the technology? Well, well, first of all, I'm glad you had Jeanette on board um, mm. ahead of me because she's um, she's incredibly knowledgeable about this stuff. And, you know, we work very closely together and uh, okay. I really enjoy working with her. So, um, um, yeah, she knows this space. She's working with clients, retail clients, you know, day in, day out and um, yeah, does some f- phenomenal work and, and helped um, some really important clients get through get through that COVID period. Um but the 70% that you talk about is is really interesting. I mean, that was 3,500 C-suite executives over 20 countries. As mm-hmm. you know, say it's, it's a large a large um, survey, um, and you're right. 70% you know say that they will be using AI automation to transform supply chains, um, and you know lots of other really interesting stats that came out. Um, you know, including you know how much. Uh, focus that will be on efficiency. So it's not just, you know, it's automate, not just automation. It's also around driving efficiency um, and just really improving, improving the, uh, the supply chain. Um, but to your question, why, why right. is, is that, why is that a focus? And I, I think it, it I think COVID really um, shot some sort of warning signs across across the the bowels of supply chain executives Mm -hmm. um for the first time probably since the war honestly i mean for a a long time we had a significant demand shock and a significant supply shock the other Mm -hmm. way around it started with the supply shock january the 23rd out of wuhan then sometime around march when we all personally went into lockdown and you know changed our buying behavior we had the demand shock Mm -hmm. so um, those two events happening at the same time really shone a light on problem areas within within supply chain, and you know those sort of known areas. Uh, you know, we we kind of always knew that there were challenges with um, with demand forecasting and demand sensing. We, you know, we we've been looking at that topic for many times. We knew that there were issues with real time collaboration back into the suppliers and the supply base. Um, and um, and we knew that we had issues with master data, um, mm. and we you know so so some of these topics have been known issues. But during the last you know, n- number of decades, right, we have had a pretty stable environment, um, year on year incremental improvements. But ultimately, it's been a stable environment. So so. In that stable environment, we kind of got got by with some of the challenges that that existed. Um, but now, organisations realise that they've got to be able to handle that um, volatility. And I think the new the new normal is just going to be hyper volatility, um, hyper volatility coming from the uncertainty around the pandemic, um, um, volatility around global trade and um, um, and trade deals, whether you're in, in Europe with Brexit or whether you're kind of looking at global trade deals, um, just wherever you look, um, there is volatility in the supply chain. So I think that that context of COVID shining a, you know, a light on the cracks in supply chain mm. plus, plus uh, an environment of volatility means that clients are now needing to focus on supply chain more than ever. And... This is a time when uh, technology is coming together. It's maturing 
mm. um, faster than ever, right? So you've got blockchain, which is now proven. You've got AI and automation, which is proven. Um, IoT, you know, is, is now reaching level of maturity that is accessible, you know, across the supply chain. So when all of these come together, the opportunities are, are you know, are very significant. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's really interesting to see how, you know, I guess, Prior, I would say, you know, just in talking to people that I've worked with and in my network that, you know, there's, there was like some skepticism about adapting like technology, like AI and things like that nature. Um, And it's interesting to see how something like you said, so shocking, right, to um, the norm uh, can kind of highlight and push people towards like, okay, maybe this is not so something to be so skeptical about maybe it's something that we really need to embrace because how can how can we react um quick enough or even see something like this coming so i think the ai kind of gives you that that predictive support right yeah absolutely um and i think um you know necessity has driven the need for for change Mm -hmm. and and you know, change management has always been one of the biggest challenge when it comes to AI automation. You know, next generation, even just you know, changing processes within supply chain. But COVID drove the need for change. Right, there were no, <laughs> there were no options. And um, you know, one of our clients realized straight away that they needed a different way of do- of doing demand sensing, of doing demand planning, and. Um, and look to AI to really bring external data to really look at the drivers affecting the purchasing decisions and use that to then inform the demand forecast. Historically, they looked in the rear, rear guard mirror, mirror and looked at what happened last week, last month, last season, and that historic forecast drove drove the future prediction. Right. Now, you know, history is is large is less relevant than it was before because behaviors have changed, and particularly during those periods of of hyper volatility, you need to be looking at the actual drivers, people movement, are schools open, are people back at work? You know, what is the you know what is the actual COVID index? You know, how many cases are there? You know, what's happening within a state? What's happening within a county? What's happening within a zip code? So. AI can help you pull together all of that mass, massive amount of information and get to the actual drivers behind, behind your decisions, my decisions to, to, um, to purchase um, and, and act in a particular way. So I think that necessity um, has, has just really accelerated um, the, the interest um, for, for moving and changing the way we do things. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think <clears throat> your key kind of underlying point there is that, you know, the behavior um, has changed. And I think similar to how we're talking about on the, you know, supply chain executive side that COVID has kind of, in a sense, uh, pushed them or forced them a little bit to consider these other options to be able to handle yeah. types of things like this in the future. It's done the same for consumer behavior too, because, you know, consumers that may be, were still, on the fence about utilizing e-commerce or something like that, you know, they had no choice at a certain point because you couldn't go to a certain store to get something that you needed. So you had to order online. And I think that that's going to stick and it's going to continue. So, so it definitely changes the, I guess, kind of atmosphere of the supply chain and what channels people are going through. So, so it'd be interesting to see, I guess, how, how it plays out, how we come out of this pandemic hopefully soon right um we'll yeah. see um but you know as we come out you know what what types of behaviors will will kind of stick and i think like you said the ai will be able to kind of gauge that a little better and more quickly for organizations as well instead of you know yeah. individuals trying to rack their brain figuring out you know, all these different factors yeah. that are now in play yeah i i have the analogy in, in my in my head of um you know, you know being in a autonomous vehicle or being in a tesla or being on mm-hmm. the road in a you know in, in a large you know packard truck a large daft truck and it you know you've got you've got sensors around you you've got ai you've got you know gps you've got all sorts of technology which is guiding and steering the vehicle 
in in the old days you know you've got to concentrate on your stick shift and you're looking in your rear guard mirror you know on a regular basis that driving experience has fundamentally changed mm-hmm. right and it's it's safer it's more predictable it's it, it, it if you think about ai external data supporting us to ensure that we're looking through and being clear about what's ahead of us um as opposed to you know having to you know use all of this manual intervention that that allows the supply chain professional to focus much more on value add activities to be much more strategic so I, so much of what happens on the on the warehouse floor you know mm. in the in the support functions around supply chain is is around mundane you know um expediting activities copying pacing swivel chair activities you know really trying to to work through some of the those cracks that we talked about earlier we need to make it easier for supply chain professionals to get to the answer we need to make sure that supply chain professionals are focusing on exceptions and therefore having much more time to focus on value add activities um i kind of imagine you know having a virtual assistant in the same way that you have a virtual assistant in the home mm. in your home now you know, we all need to have one in the office right so instead of having to go through four spreadsheets and you know three different systems to find out you know what priority clients are on back order right we just ask uh, ask watson watson you know which of my priority clients have currently got a back order challenge mm. and watson will come back within nanoseconds and tell you we use that technology within IBM supply chain mm-hmm. it's real it's mature it's you know it's it's available and, and so that's where i just i just think that next generation technology can make it easier make it cooler right you know we've got to create an environment for cool work mm-hmm. where people want to come and work in supply chain not because you know they you know the not just because that's the only route that they can go but because it's it's fundamentally a great place to work you can do real value added activities exactly yeah yeah and i think you had a really really great point there about making the work cooler right and i think especially yeah. you know coming from a distribution warehouse side of things um you know people had asked me previously you know what how do we get you know, younger people interested in like a career here. Right. And it's kind of like, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta make it more interesting. You gotta like embrace technology. You gotta make it exciting for them. Like they don't want to come somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Their impression is like the distribution center is, you know, four concrete walls with some boxes inside. So you want to kind of let them know what's, what's going on. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I, I, I've been working in supply chain since, you know, since the, uh, a long time but since the mid 90s and um you know there's always been a war for talent right people have always been trying to get get the best talent and and i think you've got to let the workplace drive that i think people have got to realize that there are careers and opportunities um within supply chain and you're right that it's it can actually be a really cool place to work and and it's it is you excuse me um, really adding significant value. And again, that's what COVID has taught us. Supply mm-hmm. chain is the heart, is the heart of the majority of organizations um, to ensure that our consumers, the public citizens get the products they need and actually, you know, becomes critical from a health perspective. So, yeah, and that is supply chain. You know, we're at the heart um, of of the world, right? And mm-hmm. um, and, I, and I truly believe that it's, it's a critical, a critical, um, um, profession for people to work in. Yeah, definitely. And I think you, you got a good point there about, you know, COVID kind of put this spotlight on uh, supply chain. I know when, you yeah. know, the whole, the whole toilet paper thing was happening, like on, yeah. on LinkedIn, yeah, like every, right. you know, supply chain professional I'm connected with are like, oh, I yeah. finally have a chance to, you know, post yeah. about a uh, bullwhip effect. And this, is excited, this is your right? moment. This is your moment. Exactly. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, to that point, I think it is a moment now to redefine mm-hmm. But now is the time where we need the best the best minds to be thinking, how do we make sure that we take this opportunity where we will have more dollars coming from the CFO, where there's more focus on supply chain, mm-hmm. and we redefine some of these processes. We'll be back after a quick break. 
You hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Absolutely. So, so I wanted to check. So, as you know, we're, we're focused um, kind of on the warehouse and distribution side yeah. with the podcast. So, so we talk about this intelligent automation and AI um, supporting demand management and forecasting. Um, yeah. You know, we have we're talking about kind of one end of the supply chain, but how does that kind of trickle down into, I guess, benefiting and improving the overall, I guess, planning on the warehouse side? and planning in terms of labor, but also in terms of what the workflow would look like? Well, look, I mean, you pulled out a really important word right at the end there, which is workflow. Mm -hmm. um, I think for, for many years, we've, we've operated in silos. And um, whether that's the ERP systems or whether that's auditors, you know, whether it's you know, just legacy ways of working, we've focused in around around departmental boundaries you know an activity gets done it gets thrown over the wall um, or gets emailed or you know faxed across this to another department and then, mm -hmm. then they go and operate on that we have now got to focus on the workflow and what we call what ibm calls intelligent workflows we've got to create platforms that connect people across that intelligent workflow what, what do I mean by that? We need to think about what is the outcome? What does the customer really need? Mm -hmm. If it's an expedited order, we need to think about all of the people that are involved in that expedited order and make sure that they're seamlessly connected. And the warehouse operation, um, the warehouse manager is absolutely critical in that to your point to make sure that we have got the right amount of people, that we know how to prioritize the order, that we've got the processes set up that make sure that that workflow is effective um, and in some cases we need new new technology platforms to support that new ways of collaborating across departments mm -hmm. um, I, I think the better that you can plan the better that you can use real-time information what we call CIP continuous intelligent planning mm -hmm. to make sure that you're getting this continuous feed um, of of needs of requirements in a segmented way and you're looking at the exceptions that we can then ensure that we've got the right um, transport planning done, we've got the right shift planning done, we've got the right um, um, inventory in the right places, and we just just make it smoother um, and, and more seamless. Um, so I guess I guess that's that's the way that the visibility mm -hmm. of information across departments and really focused on the the important workflows that happen within each business that we work with. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're talking about kind of tearing down these, these silos because I've, I've certainly experienced yeah. them um, in my uh, work as well, you know, and it can kind of really, really hinder the ability to you to provide the customer with the best experience possible because there's not, there's either not an understanding or the communication is not, Flowing all the way through to all the parties that need to know. So, so I'm really happy to hear that um, you guys are working on improving that, and I think it'll be a huge, huge um, benefit and opportunity um, to improve those customer experiences, like you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, quite right. And you know, and often you know, it's the technology that's been implemented in previous, you know, in, in previous generations, which has then created some of these silos. And that could be some inventory that somebody in the warehouse knows that there is some available inventory, but it's blocked somewhere. It's mm -hmm. blocked. It's blocked because of a master data issue, or it's blocked because it's sitting in a different system. You know, we we've got to really challenge those make sure that we've got you know the right technology to support and make sure that the warehouse operators can do what what they need to do at the same time uh, some recent studies said that 40 percent of executives believe that they need more spare capacity 
um, to handle and weather new crises in the in the future. So we've managed, we've operated in this just in time environment. And I always used to joke that in the military world it was just in case, um, but we have now got to got to think a little bit about how lean we we need to be in the supply chain mm-hmm. and what is you know what level of redundancy, what level of surge capacity, what level of risk. Uh, mitigation do we want to build into supply chains into warehouse operations and and into transportation so i think that's a new lens that we we need to think about as well Mm. so do you think i'm curious you mentioned um you know how lean do we need to be to so do you think that i guess based on what happened with the initial shock of the pandemic right and some countries closing and not being able to get supplies do you think that the supply chain needs to move towards being less lean um, to be prepped for something like that? Yeah, look, I I mentioned earlier, you know, that over the last few decades, it's been a relatively stable environment. And Mm -hmm. over the, let's say the last 30 years, you know, we've seen consumers wanting lower, you know, wanting more for less, you know, lower prices, better quality, Mm -hmm. you know, focus on the environment, you know, focus on all, you know, everything. Um, but but also wanting it at a lower price. That has forced supply chain professionals to think about lower inventory, um, pushing pushing um, inventory um, back uh, back down the supply chain, um, you know, to, into the supply base and supplier supplier. Um, and so inventory levels have come down, um, cost to service come down, um, and yes, we've become leaner, mm. um, and. And I think in that, in that it was the right thing to do. They've also become longer. They extended supply chains. You know, we had supply chains, you know, from from Asia, from Latin America, you know, kind of you know, you know long, thin, lean supply chains. Um, in an environment of hyper volatility, that that creates some challenges. In an environment where you've got um, uh, changes or um, lack of stability around global trade and, mm. and cross-border activity that creates challenges. So we have got to revisit some of the orthodoxies and some of the practices from the past and think much harder about what are the right strategies in a hyper-volatile environment. And and yeah, I do think that we will have to segment our supply chain to understand um, where we need more strategic capacity um and where we where we have supply risks i don't think it has to be everywhere but Mm. we've got to really understand tier one tier two tier three suppliers we've got to drive more collaboration they've got to feel much more like an extended part of the ecosystem and we've got to understand those pinch points um, and make sure that we've got some extra capacity to to handle um you know to de-risk some of the supply chains Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be kind of an interesting balance to see as I think, I mean, I think we're heading towards some normalcy, at least it seems, but um, you never know, I guess what's going to happen in the next couple of months with everything going on. Um, But yeah, it'd be interesting to see how organizations create, create that balance, right. Of, like you said, you know, catering to the customer who wants, you know, something for less price, but then, you know, also being sure that, you're prepped so that you just don't hit a point where you know there's volatility and and uh, all of a sudden you can't you can't even provide the customer with anything right so correct correct yeah yeah. and that's a lot of about what we why we started thinking about you know continuous intelligent planning Mm. um cip because i think that is that's a big part of 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 the future ways of working Uh, we find that clients are starting to look hard at IBP integrated business planning where they get sales and operations and finance together to really understand and have a consensus plan but that consensus plan is typically an annual you know quarterly monthly process and you know where you know many of the listeners of this podcast and you know, many of the operators in supply chain it's actually what's happening this hour this day this week that's important mm-hmm. and in that environment you have to have a much much more agile, continuous planning process. The demand sensing, the demand signal, you know, it's no good if it's last month's demand signal. It's got to be real time, what's happening, 
in the customer base today and how is that flowing through to you mentioned earlier to to my labor labor management system how is that flowing through now into my inventory repositioning decisions etc and so continuous intelligent planning is doing exactly that it's creating a platform that allows us to have driver-based forecasting what if simulation a control tower that allows you to manage by exceptions um, and not you know looking at everything and just enabling um, enabling people to be better at their job through AI and automation um, so you know some some of the ideas um, that we are working with some leading organizations now to to get much more uh, responsive mm. to you know to the change and much more agile in the way that we operate right yeah and I think I think agile agility is uh, key yeah. there as well um, so it's really really interesting um, stuff that you guys are doing and also putting out into the market and I'm happy to see that you know it's being so embraced like we had mentioned the 70 percent of supply chain executives saying that you know they're planning to use some type of AI or something of that nature yeah. um, in the soon to be or not already started. Um, so so it's good to see and definitely happy to hear yeah. that the technology has evolved to be in that acceptance range. And you know it's it's not a great thing that a pandemic had to happen, I guess, to push that. Um, yeah. But it is a good thing that we can come out of it stronger as a whole um, and as an industry. So correct, right? That's good. Look, you you look back. I think it was Plato many many years ago, the Greek philosopher, that mm -hmm. said that necessity uh, was the mother of invention. And so I think we've got to leverage this opportunity. We've got to reimagine the future. And we've got to use this convergent technology to create, you know, new workflows. And just as we said earlier, create a cool work environment for us to uh, be able to service our customers better. Absolutely. Um, so Jonathan, I want to. Thank you so much for talking to me this morning, coming on the show. Um, how can people find out more information about IBM and the great things that you guys are doing? Um, IBM.com slash supply chain. You know, we've got piles of knowledge. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, we, we've got, you know, lots of uh, lots of research and, and lots of uh, opportunities. So, yeah, just reach out to me or get onto our onto our website um, ibm.com slash supply chain and you'll find um, lots of lots of interesting stuff there great and we'll put that link at the newwarehouse.com as well as a link to um, the supply chain report we were referring to as well so jonathan thank you again oh, thank you it's uh, it's been great chatting with you kevin and uh, all the best with your future podcast i hope we can connect again sometime in the future absolutely thank you You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Latte. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for the New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.